You've raised $37 million recently. What's it been like moving over from the content side to the actually business VC side? Uh, it's been harder than I expected, to be totally honest. You need to get to, to take your audience and do something like what I did. Take them somewhere that you can control it. Well, how does it feel to be wealthy now? After, after grinding after this for so long? It's better than before. It is, it is definitely <laughs> nice. How did Doug DeMiro go from making car reviews on YouTube to receiving a $37 million investment in his company? Doug is no small fish on YouTube. With over 4.5 million subscribers, his long-form car reviews can often hit views well into the millions. Having shared screen time with Jay Leno, as well as a recurring guest on mainstream car blogs and involved in the annual Pebble Beach Concours, he's quickly becoming a staple of modern automotive culture. If you've seen one of Doug's car reviews, you've kind of seen them all. In fact, they all start the same way. This, 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 this. While they might be repetitive in structure, they are oddly entertaining even to non-car enthusiasts. What Doug has perfected is the art of quirkiness. Any fan could tell you that. It's pretty obvious, especially as he has an entire segment in each car review that highlights the quirks and features of the car, as well as the signature Doug score. However, most of the audience misattributes his quirkiness to his odd demeanor, his extreme friendliness, and enthusiastic personality. What they don't see is that Doug is actually a master storyteller. His early career as a freelance automotive journalist for sites such as AutoTrader showcased his talent for commentating with flair. He was quickly gaining an audience, developing a unique persona, and a formula on how to discuss an automobile. By the time he began making car reviews on YouTube, he could export his writing skills to the new medium to accurately personify the cars he reviews. What is different about Doug's reviews is that you really learn about what a car would feel like to own, not what it's like to drive. That's an important distinction, and for whatever reason, really piques the interest of viewers. A video will never properly convey the feeling of accelerating in a Ferrari. A reviewer could show you the 0-60 to 60 stats, describe how the car feels to turn, and how fast it might look, but you as the audience don't get to experience it yourself. With Doug's reviews, the driving section is usually tacked on at the end of the review, arguably just as a formality. The real review is the quirks and features, such as the size of the cup holder, how to change the air conditioner temperature, or the available trunk space. It seems silly, but by accumulating these quirks and features, Doug can personify the car and tell a story of how this car really feels and who it might be best for. It's a pretty unique take on the traditional car review formula, and obviously it's worked out well for him. As his YouTube channel began soaring to new heights, so did his income. While that sounds great now, Doug recognized that although the YouTube algorithm may give now, it can also take away at a moment's notice. He needed to come up with a way to monetize his audience outside of the YouTube platform, especially while his popularity was so high. Normally when a creator launches a brand, it's usually a pretty simple product like some clothing merchandise or some kind of drink such as coffee. Doug's ambitions were not only significantly higher, but what he wanted to offer isn't a product at all. It's a service. In 2019, Doug partnered with tech entrepreneur and car enthusiast Blake Machado and developed an online auction platform, which focuses on buying and selling enthusiast vehicles from the 1980s to today. If you watch any of Doug's videos, he makes sure that you know that the site is Cars and Bids. Be sure to check out Cars and Bids. This Ferrari 328 is currently for sale, being auctioned live on Cars and Bids. Be sure to check out Cars and Bids. His auction platform was facilitating the transactions of unique cars, including many he reviewed himself. There aren't many mainstream creators that have launched a service of this scale. Perhaps the most comparable would be Mr. Beast's Ghost Kitchen model, as that kind of is a service, but this blows it out of the water. Mr. Beast's core brand really has nothing to do with food, so it does feel a bit out of left field. Meanwhile, Doug's cars and bids really make sense within the confines of his audience. Having built this startup in stealth mode, once it was completely fine-tuned and ready to go, only then did Doug begin promoting it. The site was released in May of 2020, not quite at the start of COVID, but not far behind. 
Once the COVID pandemic was in full swing, the significant reduction in car use appeared to be a death sentence right away for the new startup. However, what many including Doug did not foresee is the supply chain disruptions which caused a massive surge in used car purchases and prices. Perhaps it was a bit of luck to help the business, but it likely didn't need it to survive either. While Doug may have thought the platform would only host a few specialty cars at the start, he was completely shocked to see it on the first day of launching it, the site received 900 submissions. That's the power of already having a built-in audience. Cars and Bids has since sold over $230 million worth of special interest cars. High dollar sales since 2020 have included a 2006 Ford GT for $395,000, a 2002 Lamborghini Murcielago for $417,000, and a Hummer-like 1996 Toyota Mega Cruiser that went for $310,000. As well, for seemingly no special reason, the site currently corners the market for sales of high-profile electric trucks, like the Hummer EV, Rivian R1T, and Ford Lightning. As the amount of daily auctions increased, so did the interest from private equity and venture capital. Ultimately, it was the churning group that provided the $37 million investment into the company. Why them? Because the churning group works specifically with these crater-owned and crater-led businesses like Meat Eater and Barstool Sports. As part of the deal, the churning group takes a majority stake in a new company that will combine Doug's YouTube work and cars and bids into one venture. It will also place Ro Choi, an expert in business transformation, as CEO. A problem with this investment into Doug's YouTube channel and the site Cars and Bids is that it's so reliant on Doug himself. If he were to leave, it would likely be pretty catastrophic to both brands. The investment will likely bring in new talent, so Doug will have someone not only to riff off of, but also allow for more content to be produced simultaneously and without him being present. So what else is this $37 million for? Doug has suggested it's partly as a cushion to provide them with the flexibility to try new things and hire new staff to handle operations, but mainly, it's for growth. Expect to see a lot more cars on the site over the next few years, as well as Doug promoting them on the YouTube channel. They are looking to corner this auction market by reducing the frictions of transactions. For example, Cars and Bids just launched Insight Shipping Options, which for someone purchasing unique cars from someone across the country is an often overlooked expense and hassle. Let's not forget that Doug did sell a majority stake in his YouTube work and the site Cars and Bids, so this was also a cash out for him. Nothing wrong with that, but that's the reason he can finally buy his dream car. The world of crater-led businesses has been growing significantly over the past decade. However, most offerings have focused on getting a quick buck from their audience. Doug may be part of a new wave of crater businesses, where overpriced merch falls out of style in favor of providing meaningful services tailored to their audience. Private equity and venture capital are watching this space like a hawk. With the next generations of creators, many of them might already have a business they want to create, but produce content first to build their audience purely with the intention so they can later market their company to them. While Doug is absolutely genuine with his rise to automotive fame, you might start seeing a lot of phony influencers that are really industry plants, trying to develop natural audiences to slowly push them to becoming customers of venture-backed companies. Let's just hope there's more Dugs out there, because after all, we like his quirks and features. If you liked the video, subscribe and give it a Doug score in the comments.